Well, thank you. So nice for you all to come out this evening. My name is Linda Brooks Burton, and I am the branch manager here at the Bayview Wadden branch. I've been here for about 11 years. And uh, through all those 11 years, we've always had a poetry recital. Um, and we have broadcasted it or had it videotaped for the last 16 or 17 years. But it's actually been going on for 29 years. So we've corrected uh, our publicity to say that we are now in our 29th year of this poetry recital. So it's my pleasure to introduce our host for the evening, uh, who has hosted all those 29 evenings. And it's our own local uh, Bayview historian and local poet, Larry Ware. Let's give him a big round of applause. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, good evening. And it is indeed a pleasure to see all my friends here. And um, let's give uh, Linda and uh, our cameraman, Dave Swabby, uh, a great round of applause. Uh, two really wonderful people. Uh, uh, Dave and the staff been coming out here covering this event. And you know, I'll tell you, um, it was 29 years ago in this room, we had a vision and a dream, and, and I had poetry, poet friends and writers, and I say, hey, let's get together. And we sat in the round table out there and brainstorm, and I say, hey, I'm going to get this poetry thing started, you know. and uh, here, yeah, 29 years later, uh, so, and come. Uh, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, start this uh, program out with a poem, uh, being that this is a public library, and we want to promote literacy and promote uh, all of the children to come here, and adults too, and read books. And uh, uh, a quote that I wrote many years ago, uh, libraries are the fountains of wisdom. Do not ponder or wander, but always have a quench and thirst for knowledge. And uh, this first poem I'm going to do is uh, entitled, uh, Write It Out All the Way to the Top. Inner self-respect became the light of my soul and a way of life, and my heart became entrusted with the virtues of dignity and pride, and my outer appearance was just an inner reflection of self-esteem, self-love, respect, and understanding. As I stood alone at the top of my world, I became the builder, engineer, and architect of my own destination. Then I started to write it all out all the way to the top. And as I became totally immersed in the stream of life, I started to write it all out all the way to the top. And as the eyes of truth got brighter, self-love surfaced and warm horizons turned golden as timeless wisdom dazzled in a wave of beauty and splendor and as the gray clouds filled with rain get kissed by the lovely sunshine, the skies turn lovely blue. Then I knew that I could see forever and ever. Now I'm in harmony with myself as the spirits in a temple of wisdom touched my heart and filled my soul. And I became enriched with the many qualities of life. That which appear, disappear, then reappear. Seek the plateau of the horizon for your field of vision is clear. And when those creative, productive, and constructive thoughts begin to fill your minds and you know you've got it, go for it, because that one solid moment could strike any minute now. I desire to blow my own horn at a band of glory because I've seen the light of many dawns. I do not lust for hours of unworthy self-glory, for I will reach for the fire that will bring me rain and give my heart for the cause now because we have a chance for righteousness and be the dream of the dreamers. So write your way out, write your way up, write your way over, write your way to the top, and don't stop. Then light up and write it all out, all the way to the top, and write on. Fulfilling are the virtues of emotional poise, composure, and self-control. So exert the leadership qualities, lead the way to the top, and write on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, I'm going to introduce our first poet. Um, thank you, Linda. Um, our first poet is going to be uh, Brother Patrick. Let's give Brother Patrick a great round of applause. Uh, Brother Patrick has participated several years in our recital. OK, there, brother. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. It's very nice to be here. 
Uh, the first poem I'd like to read, uh, I wrote in uh, February 17, 1994. Uh, it's entitled, Do You Read Me Over? Not long after the death sentence I had received was lifted and I was exonerated, my spirit was revived. I decided that a change would be necessary in order to, pre to prevent me from falling victim to the same circumstances that had impaired me before. Not allowing nothing to persuade, in, to persuade my thinking or intrude upon my concentration. The first thing I would have to do is to develop my thought perception to its strongest possible degree. This would enable me to block out any and all irrelevant, unuseful conversation that only served to diminish my mental state of well-being. This would also shield me from the unwanted pain and misery that people tend to impose upon you when they fail to, in, to communicate their thoughts properly. No longer shall I be drawn into meaningless chit-chat that's based on that he say, she say shit. Spare, <laughs> spare me the pain. I will not serve as an interpreter of senseless, illogical words that's inflicted with ignorance and stupidity. You'd have to know what you're saying and say what you know. All BS aside, be aware, all information not intelligently thought out before transmitted would be blocked to ensure against misunderstandings. All clear signals containing valuable information will be properly, in, properly interpreted and be responded to in the same fashion that it's transmitted, thus eliminating all forms of miscommunication. Do you read me? Over. The next poem is even, uh, was written before that. It's called Better Off Dead. Um, it's an addiction poem. How, how, long, how long will you let things that you know were wrong cripple you in your head, not even lifting a finger to help yourself? Or well, brother, you're better off dead. Don't tell me, let me guess. You like being down on your ass, waiting, wait, wallowing in your own self-pity, blaming others for your troubles, not allowing a positive thought to creep in your head. Well, brother, let me tell you, you'll be better off dead. Your mind is not strong enough to put the past to rest. You could call it a mercy killing if you like, but I think I'll pull the plug. I, because you're, you're not doing nothing with your life. So brother, you'll be better off dead. Thank, thank you. Thank you, brother Patrick. OK. Uh, our next uh, poet is going to be uh, this uh, young man is a brilliant and gifted musician, and you're going to hear a lot about him. Uh, just recently met him this year. He's a member of the Clyde Street Band. He's here with his mother, and I invited him as my special guest. Uh, uh, remember the name uh, Brian Flax. This, this, this is a genius here. But he's a brilliant poet, him and his mother, they're multi-talented. So uh, from the East Bay, let's give uh, Brother Brian Flack a great round of applause. Hi, brother, and welcome. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. The poem that I'm about to recite is a poem that I wrote, actually, for one of my close friends. He's going through a hard time. He's been down the bad road most of his life, trying to turn his life around got his GED, and just got accepted to and will be attending Texas Southern University in January. I'm very proud of that. But as usual, there are always those naysayers, those people that try to get in your way. So the poem that I wrote is entitled, You Will Move. <laughs> so I wrote it to inspire him, ended up inspiring myself, and I hope it will inspire you as well. You will move. Get out of my way. I refuse to let you or your negativity drop stumbling blocks in my path today. You will move. You will not stop me from achieving anything that I want to achieve. Now, you may think that you have the upper hand, 
but don't celebrate too fast because I still have a few more tricks up my sleeve. You will move. You will not inhibit me or stop me from reaching my goal. Now you may think that you have me surrounded, but heaven has my back and my savior has my soul. You will move. I will not let you rain on my parade because I'm walking towards the sunshine and then I'm gonna lay down and rest in the shade. If you're a mountain, I will move you. If you're a brick wall, I will knock you down. I will break up the negative vibes that you send my way as if I were a jackhammer and they were the ground. Lord knows I've been tested and I've had to endure and overcome a lot of frustration. So any time that I thought that it was starting to get to me, I just remembered one simple phrase, and that is that adversity is the birth of inspiration. So you will move. You've tried so many times to discourage me or deter me, and yet you still haven't had any success. Well, you can keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying until your head hurts, <laughs> but you're gonna fail just like all the rest. You will move because I've come up against and conquered obstacles that were a million times bigger than you. So instead of sitting around dreaming up ways to try to bother me or get my attention, why don't you find something else to do? There will be no bad notes in my symphony, and the road that I travel will continue to stay smooth. I overcame obstacles, I overcame adversity, and I overcame you. I told you, you were gonna move. <laughs> You will. <laughs> All right, brother. Let's, let's give him another great round of applause. All right. Wow, that was beautiful there, brother Brian. Um, our next poet is going to be uh, Elizabeth Hope. Let's give Elizabeth Hope a great round of applause for the first time. Okay. slightly different tenor here. Um, my first one's called Air Holes. Now that my friend Maria is off in New York having an affair, I'm going to visit bringing her cat. Collecting the cat for Maria's husband is not so hard. Ted and I and the cat look at each other. I remember Ted and the cat. The cat goes in a cardboard box. This is the last shipment of possessions. I recall how Ted took Maria to the airport in their small convertible, now sold. That last day, she said she'd take the shuttle, but he said, don't be silly. Now he asks if I'll be all right with the cat in the box. I say, yes, there are air holes. <laughs> okay. Here's one for my daughter. This is called Miss Fisher. In sixth grade, she asked the class how long we could look at the ocean. I listened for the right response, waited for the usual smart kids to respond with their straining hands, the answer undoubtedly in some book assigned last week I hadn't read. 10 minutes, said one kid. An hour, someone else, arms waving, each flailing, to be called. She let them speak and then announced that she could sit all day and watch the waves and not be bored. I watched her closely now, Miss Fisher, who often had her fingers in my upper arm, sent me to the hall with Sarah at Christmas time when we gunned each other with our egg cart and reindeer. She wished my handwriting were as nice as Julie's, my book reports as neat. At report card time, she wrote, I wouldn't keep my desk clean. Miss Fisher, with her tight dresses, skull eyes, her salt-stained underarms, bony jaw. When Cheryl stayed at my house, we burned her paper effigy on the fireplace bricks, giggling. I have, at the beach, watched the waves for hours. I love all water. 
Ms. Fisher's aberration in the classroom is years old. She gave me something briefly I could think about. I'm sure if I'm remembered, it's not like Julie. The waves come in, the waves go out. Thank you. Thank you very much there, Elizabeth. Uh, our next poet is uh, going to be a Pamela Flack. Let's give her a great round of applause. This is Brian's mother, and what a wonderful poet. Uh, all right. OK. Thank it's you. a pleasure to be here. This is my right. first time being a participant. Okay. So I thank you for inviting us. Uh, you're quite welcome. And it's a blessing to be here to Amen. say some words that I hope will be of inspiration to you this yeah. evening. The poem that I'm about to recite is a poem that I actually wrote for my son, which you've already met. He was a lot younger when I wrote the poem. It was right after the Rodney King incident. And he looked at me on the way home from school and said, Mom, if people can do that to you, then why do I need to try to be the best I can? Why should I do my best and strive to be as good as I can be if people are allowed to treat people like they did Rodney King? And I looked at him and I said, you know, I don't know the answer. I do know that we have to continue. Every American is asking the same question that you're asking right now. And the Lord sent me this inspiration. I wrote it for him to recite. But tonight, I'm going to deliver the message. The poem is entitled, We've come a long way from king to king. We've come a long way from king to king, from peaceful protest to a riot scene. If Dr. King was still here somewhere, he'd think his dream had become a nightmare. We come a long way from king to king, from we shall overcome and be free, to videotaped brutality. Now, brutality isn't anything new. It's been an issue all along. But with the Rodney King beating on videotape, we thought at last we could right some wrongs. At last. There was irrefutable proof, and our voices through Rodney could be heard. But when the verdict came out not guilty, we were shocked and angered by the words. Freedom isn't ringing from the hilltops. Instead, injustice rings bitterly through. Even with the videotape, we can do what we want to you. We come a long way from king to king, yet both kings ask the world for peace, for the violence and destruction to end, and injustice for all to cease. We got to be proud and believe in ourselves have faith in God and pray. And no matter what happens, hold on to the dream, because we shall overcome someday. We come a long way from king to king, but don't you lose that dream. Thank you. <laughs> Let's give, let's, let's give Pamela Rousen uh, uh, a I, I tell you, when I met Pamela, 
I met Pamela over there in the East Bay, and she recited that poem there. That was a first round knockout. I said, that was just, just I say, I say, Pamela, you and Brian, y'all got to be on my show this year. <laughs> so, wow, uh, thank you. Thank you from the heart like you. Uh, hey, y'all blessing. Everybody's blessing, but that, amen. Um, Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Our, our next poet is, uh, hey, Jesse. What? What? <laughs> you next. Uh, our next poet is going to be our protege's brother, Jess. He, uh, he started out uh, very young here. And uh, this, this young brother, that's Denzel right there. Uh, so Jesse, Jesse Wiley's gonna come up and do some poetry. Uh, this brother's a super heavyweight. Let's give him a great round. Now, now, if you're Denzel Washington, who am I? You're, uh, you're, um, yeah. They call me Mr. Tibbs. <laughs> I had to man, brother, man, brother, man, brother, man. All right, so. See, I like this. All eyes are on me. It's my fantasy, man. I have all these black faces and Spanish faces and white faces on me. <sighs> this is called Come and Give Me More of What I Like. Bathe me in the blood of my ancestors. Wash me in the saliva of their tongue. Comb my hair with their fingers. Come and give me more of what I like. Show me pictures of Africa, the Caribbean, Jamaica, or West India, where I would have run with my brother, where my ancestors are from. Come and give me more of what I like. Shower me in embraces of Hughes and Baldwin and Wright and Haley, Du Bois and Hines, Sojourner and Tubman, just to name some. Come and give me more of what I like. Come and give me more historical insight into ancestors I want to be like, like Shaka and Turner and Attux and Sinke. People I want to be free like, those I want to march with down Selma roads to the beat of footsteps and rhythm where we shall overcome hymns, ancestors with God sown into the hymns of their hearts. Come and give it to me. Ancestors who raised me, men and women who gave me stories and poetry and song and dance and art and war and street lights and a map of the stars like Banneker and so many uses for a peanut like Carver and so many ways to be melancholy like Miles and Coltrane and Bird. The birth of the cool, a bitch's brew for my ear when I'm kind of blue or in love supreme, listening to your bird sweet, eating strange fruit with Eleonora. I want all of that shit. And give me more Martin and more Malcolm while you at it, along with Garvey, Molly, Evers, and four little Birmingham chicas, and throwing some of that fried chicken fresh from the coop, spitting game to a shorty, while listening to old men in fedoras and zoot suits crashing bones on a granite stoop of Louis Brownstone in Harlem, where the Renaissance is still being realized post-mortem. All I need to sleep is Luther, Sam Cooke, and Marvin on repeat. Come and give me a dose of the sweet sounds of one or all three. Give me freedom in knowing my past. Give me the honor of knowing each path they took to get me where I've crashed, landed, and am now looking for my purpose in books and music and paintings and math until it all adds up to me, a curious cat, who even if the cat got his tongue, is still able to write down what he wants and he wants you to come and give him more of what he likes, like picture photographs and countless paragraphs of people, places, dates, and times, reasons and rhymes, sublime subliminal secrets hard to find, like scavenging through photo albums looking for Nina Simone records, or suddenly seeking several soothing songs, such sassafras for my soul. A whole entire lifetime of food for thought. Come and give me the closed eye, puffy cheek, Gillespie, bebop beat. Come alliterate all of me. Liberate all of me with elevating, skating through scat, that jazz blues hybrid 
Way past being a genre, it's become a way of life. Come and give me more of what I like. Thank you. Okay, so, um, can I do two more, Mr. Mr. Where? Mr. What are you doing? Come on, host. <laughs> can I do two more? Sure, you can. All right, you got thank it. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so, I have two more, and um, this one is called Not a Piece. This is not a piece. And my revolution won't be televised or prophesized on the streets or in church. But still, my work is purposed and has value beyond a page or a stage or a circus of ego trippers and lonely men lusting over the microphone like John's over strippers, Jack Tripper over Mr. Roper, Oprah over Harpo, Etc. cetera, and et cetera. Et cetera for my headaches, as I've always been for the people, and not enough for myself, so nothing else matters anymore but me now, and this is the best i felt in moons. And many would pay beaucoup de blooms to feel as I do, exhilarated and emancipated from who I was, just another wearied poet in the spotlight, just because. For no particular reason, just because. But I'm neither judge or jury or God or Lucifer or some important diplomat from Afghanistan who has Islam as advocate and bombs strapped to his chest and aggregate hatred in his soul for the US and his people. And I still cannot hail a cab in a land where all men are created equal but separate. And minority folk are still sequestered in ghettos that they embrace with fervor as Iraqis do their Quran. They will also kill for it. For a couple of dollars, a corner, or a block, they will serve a couple of years for it. No peace. This is but a poem of millions, and millions hope and pray for it every day, along with love and lottery millions. Civilians and aliens alike a light across America searching for freedom and refuge, but the fight is unfortunately as futile as life in prison with no chances of parole, all appeals off for naught. I thought the world technicolor until I sought reason with my sister and brother, and all I could see was black on black minstrelsy and hate mongers, and I heard nothing because not a single soul said shit to make me feel good, so I became ornery, and even the pen dishonored me, and I began to pin pieces to make everyone else feel as horribly as I did, and crumble into so many pieces that was little that could be done to salvage their souls. But I told you, this is not a piece. This poem has vegetable oil and chicken grease stains peppered about each stanza, and blood flows rapidly through each and every line infected with AIDS, breast, and lung cancer, and sewage treatment plants, Philip Morris, and unsafe sex are the cause, as women and small children take pause to die waiting for the 15 for an hour, while men and boys have power struggles by food and liquors, wearing full metal jackets with magazines beneath they pull triggers, and all niggers to each other in awe, and in awe, Dozens will see their rise and fall and demise and fall when leaves begin to fall, burnt orange and brick, and stick to the ground like blood so thick it shall remain until the earth evaporates or each one of us sinks so quick into the sands of time that will finally be a peace so sublime it channels us back through time. And instead of dying again, we begin to live and give ourselves over to love like Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> Ozzie Davis and Ruby Dee, and I love Harpo. God knows I do, but I kill him dead. Love that hurts and works miracles, that is purposed and has value beyond a page or a stage or a circus. Peace. Okay, so I'm being greeted and I have one more poem. And um, I'm gonna end on that note. And uh, it's called uh, Edging Towards the Fall.
and then I'm done. And by the way, I am taking donations for the Jesse, the Hill Jesse Fund. So uh, we're starting off at $10, okay, going on up to 5000 So uh, the money can be paid uh, ATM, I take ATM, uh, cash, or even food stamps, okay? Oh, uh, outside, I'm taking, I got a sign-up sheet, so, okay. <laughs> Edging towards the fall. <clears throat> if the world was flat, I'd happily jump off the edge and fall forever, because forever is for always, and I want to be eternal. Given the chance to build a new black nation somewhere in Africa, if all of us Negroes and Creoles and mulattoes could set sail today with money equaling the price of 40 acres and a mule, me and mine would be picture postcards tomorrow. Picture postcards tomorrow. Picture postcards tomorrow of me in Ghana, me clothed in kente cloth, me juxtaposed against the Sphinx and marvel at our resemblance. You can replicate Egypt on my face. Just cut away my nose to find your way. And I'll return to my hourglass when time fades away. If I can't choose where I return to, and Africa bids me adieu. But if reincarnation is true, I'll use the sand I came from and reimagine myself anew. And I'll do the same as before. Fall into the floor like men fall into the floor before the one plus four comes a bashing through the door looking for a score of crack and whores and money and men in white tees and he's no criminal, she's in the wrong place and we've got to jump off the face of the world and fall because forever is for always and I want to be eternal like promontories and unbroken promises. Paragraphs of promenades past the peopled parks, garden parks eternal, like pictures stark and vivid, violets are red forever. I want to be infinite as time and never stop being like breathing is for always until the trees stop growing and topple over like dynasties or two tall aborigines or basketball players above the rim looking out into the distance. They can see my chest rising and falling as I dream I am them. As tall as the wind is mighty in the winter when snow falls and flurries and blankets the earth so snug, it is actually warm outside. And I am falling and it feels tremendous inside. And now I am weightless, capeless, carried along through space by faith and sea spray. Nakedness no matter, laughter fills the void and all the freedom gives me joy ever after. And if ever there was room for bliss, it's now, falling through time. No more time, there's only now. No more fear for the clock stops here and here is forever. And I can hear time slowing to a crawl because I will always be here. No matter the world be flat or a sphere, warm as soft music in my ears or as cold as Icelandic chill or men who cry blood in place of tears. Matter it not race, color, creed, gender, preference, or how many years I've lived my life. Once I've thrown myself off the edge, all that concerns me is flight. And day and night will be as one. And like the sun, I will burn a path across the universe and become like Haley, appearing ever so often every hundred years to give the world a glimpse of a falling star who connects space and time and designs direction on the sky like Rembrandt Science's reflection on canvas. Call me Copernicus, a miracle of Christ, forever and for always, eternal. Let's give Brother Jessa another great round of applause. <laughs> Jessa is one of the most gifted poets on this planet. Uh, this is a real special time here. Uh, my, little, my little princess is in the house now. Yeah. Uh, uh, Precious and uh, Kat Catherine. Kathy, uh, they're going to do a poem uh, dance routine. So uh, this is Princess Precious here. That's my little. Amen. You know, when Precious and Junior, when they were little like that, uh, Precious say, the mother and the father say, give your daddy a break. 
and say, yeah, this is my part. No, this is my part. Precious have his head over here, and Junior have his head over there. So I got two hearts right there. Right. So that's my little princess there. Who loves it, baby? Who loves it? I can't hear you. Now, Junior said, Little Spike and Big Spike. Now, who Big Spike? Larry. Who, who's Big Spike and who Little Spike? You and Larry. I'm, Big I'm Big Spike. Spike. Who Big Spike? You. And who Little Spike? Me. I thought Junior was <laughs> Little Spike. OK, they going to, uh, we got a little thing going there. Uh, uh, OK, uh, let's uh, intro introduce what you're going to do there. Let's give them a great round of applause. Hi, good evening. It's a privilege to be here. Um, Precious and I are a church family. That's how we know each other. And at St. Paul Tabernacle Baptist Church, which is like down the street and around the corner, um, we have a dance ministry. We have the seeds of a dance ministry that we're sowing. And so one of the things that we have learned to explore uh, with in dance is moving to spoken word, you know, not just music. And um, this is a prayer that uh, basically means a lot to me. It's come to me in my journey in recovery. Um, it's called the St. Francis Prayer. Sometimes it's called the 11th Step Prayer. And, um, but mostly, you know, it's a prayer of healing, I think. And, um, and so it was purely by, I think, our friendship that Precious was reading it while I was moving to it one uh, evening before a program. And um, it was just really a delight, you know, to hear the words come from a child's voice. So um, we're both very bashful performers. So um, <laughs> we, we jumped on this opportunity as a way of just getting used to, you know, sharing our art. Lord, make me a channel. <laughs> Are you ready? Lord, make me a channel of thy peace, that where there is hatred, I may bring love, that where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness, that where there is discord, I may bring harmony that where there is error, I may bring truth that where there is doubt, I may bring faith that where there is despair, I may bring hope that where there is shadows, I may bring light that where there's sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, grant me I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, to understand, to be understood, to love than to be loved. For it is by self forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Amen.
that wasn't tears, that was rain, rain and joy. Uh, here's another Kodak moment, another special moment. A uh, very special lady just entered the house here. Uh, you know, I tell you. Oh, boy. Thank you. Yeah, this is a joyous night here. Uh, I want to introduce you to a, a very special lady in our life, a wonderful lady. Uh, like I mentioned to some of you people here, uh, um, you know, uh, a mother, she uh, had a wonderful lady, a wonderful spirit. My mother uh, had a heart attack over two years ago. She's been in a coma three separate times and been on life support three separate times. By the grace of God, she is here in the house. Let me introduce you to my mother, Miss Dorothy Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. some slide. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I promised Linda a hundred people. We coming. Okay. On, uh, excuse me. Uh, our next port is going to be uh, Alicio Castillo, Castillo. Uh, Lamont. Let's give this gentleman a great round of applause. This is his first time here. Uh, like to uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Alicio. My name, my name is Alicio Castillo Limones, and uh, I'm glad to be here. And uh, so far, it's been beautiful, and I think uh, all of you have been real great. Uh, hope I do a good job. Um, I have uh, three that I would like to read, and the first one is going to be called uh, The Weeping Candles, okay? They're crying. And uh, the way I conceive this, uh, this uh, verse poem is that I, uh, uh, my mother died December the 31st of 2005. On September the 13th of uh, 2006 was her birthday, and I was thinking uh, if I could write something for her, you know, think of something to write for her, and I said, well, let me see. So I started calling it uh, the missing birthdays, which she's not here, her first birthday she's not here. So I said, uh, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> then I ended up writing, and as we do, you know, we, I ended up changing everything around. After about the, the first uh, two hours, I'm saying, I came up with something totally different. So I named it the, I named it the Weeping Candles, okay? And that's one right here. So that's... Uh, dedicated to her and to her uh, struggles, um, hard worker and uh, good person. And to all those uh, people who, uh, who have their first birthday, which they are not here, and we're all gonna have one of them missing birthdays. And I called it the weeping candles, okay? <clears throat> so here we go. Weeping candles, a song verse poem, I think, right? A box of weeping candles are crying and crying once again. Today's someone's birthday that's no longer living here. They come and see you smile, but instead find you sad. Someone went to heaven and to that perfect place to live. And they can see when you are lonely and also when in pain. <clears throat> Sometimes they come just to see us and can stand very, very near. When the storms come, to bring, when the storms come bringing the waters from the heavenly man, they are still weeping candles. 
though now waiting sadly in the rain. A box of weeping candles are crying, crying, and crying again. Today is a very special someone's very special missing day, and we'll all have one of them. But that special someone, 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 is no longer living here. A box of weeping candles are crying and crying once again. Now, we are like that famous theater whose stars have moved on and on. Left on its, left on its, left on its, left, left on its unlit stage alone. And alone are those lonely plastic candle props. That, 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 us. Okay? We can count this. The next one, uh, the next one I, I've named, uh, I've named uh, the OG prayer. And for us, for us who don't know what the OG stands for in the inner cities, it stands for OG prayer. <laughs> Old gangster, okay? Uh, Middle-aged guys, a lot of us are here, you know, and uh, we go to that stage where we start to lose our knees, our elbows start to hurt, and we start to become an OG, okay? So this is called the OG prayer. We're praying to God, okay? That, hey man, I can feel something different here. Brother, what's going on? I like to pray to you, even though, you know, sometimes I, I've skipped, uh, I've skipped uh, times in my life when I've gone months without talking to, the, to that man upstairs, and that's wrong. And uh, one day you wake up and you go, wait a minute, I gotta talk to him. You know, I'm, I'm getting, you know, getting to, I need to get serious with something, you know, with God, right? So I named this the OG prayer, okay? And uh, it's for us men, uh, probably mostly. Uh, <clears throat> it starts like this. And this is uh, inner city talk, okay? So it'll be like kind of, kind of slangish. Hope you're not too busy to hear a cat like me or to hear one who's grooved on life like D. Prayers thickens coming from cats in need and other ones who think of self as clean or players coming from wealth thus free. Aging is up on all, all things. This includes me. My turn has come again to wrap a tail on Big G. Mostly about a planet unlike any that I've ever seen. Had a hard time since 10, couldn't beg for a lick. Your time is always right being hip of within, couldn't speak their lang, it wish, so I was only mean, okay? Gee, you got to give me some, some extended credit. Never once turned my dreams or back on thee. My faiths and words of wisdom you once told me. One who hated him it's again, clearly hating from the deep. You know who that is. Working hard with sick and kin to entrap the free. And lonely being blinded by blind ones' needs who have been blinded by the haters' crafty deeds. Need to pray for them. May be we can set them free. Yay, 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 free, free, free. <laughs> free, 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 let's set them free. That's, that's that one, okay? <laughs> okay, this, this right here, I can see back in, uh, when I was, uh, 1957, I was, uh, I was uh, four years old. It was a dream, and then I turned into a, a verse poem. But uh, that was years later. And uh, we used to live in central Mexico, and it was like living in Central Africa, uh, real hot, uh, terrible, harsh, harsh conditions, uh, shortage of everything. Water, everything was shortage. Okay, so here, here's a, a, a dream 
Then I can see back when I was uh, four years old, but I turned into a poem later on in life. And I had a dream, something like this, okay? <clears throat> uh, I, live my own, I live in my own private mansion, and this mansion, and this private mansion is me. Since I do try to be all those things that he tells me I should be. In my private mansion, why, I have just about all that I need. Why, I have my own DVDs and a thin and huge computer TV. Now I'm seriously, seriously thinking about coming out of that MTV, and I have this one love seat and a big wonderful place, sad place to sit. Sometimes I even get to see my small circle of the finest of friends. We sit, we chat, drink some hot cocoa, or sometimes delicious cafe. You would not believe what happened on a cool summer's eve. Why? It was none other than Jesus who came by to be with me. Okay? He told me about yesterdays. At first, it was great, then very sad. Then he told me about tomorrows, and I couldn't help it. I cried. Then he told me more and more and more. Still, I couldn't help it. Then he told me about the heavens and about the powers of love. He humored me with fairy tales that would place any author in awe. Told me about his favorite angels, whose only job was to spread love. In the morning, he said he really had to go. Said he loved my private mansion, thanked me for being so kind, but he had a very busy place he had to go see. Said he had many things to do, and even more people, like soldiers, in their final days to go see. Planned to visit a dead soldier's seven-year-old boy in thoughts and thinking to end it all. Tell the boy to come by and join me in my mansion, since I never stray too far from here. Walked him out towards the orchards, then for, a long, for as long as I possibly could, see. Thank you. Brother Jim Martin, uh, this gentleman is another extraordinary poet, so let's give uh, Brother Jim a great round of applause. Listen, can we give Larry applause for, for being so consistent at this? He's doing a wonderful job, wonderful job. Listen, I know you, everybody said, Brother brought a computer. No, um, <laughs> I, and I really did. I, I left my paperwork at home, and I just happened to have my computer with me. And my work is on the computer, but that's fortunate because so is my music. And uh, uh, so I, I'm, I've got a few things to share with you. And uh, I'd like to start with uh, trying to determine if I do the one that I, of 150 pieces I've got, I've got one memorized. And um, let me just try that one for you. You know, I came home one afternoon, one evening, after being in a lot of community meetings and, and working on the issues that we deal with in our communities on a regular basis. And I got home and I, I went into the dining room and sat down on the dining room table. It was late at night. And as I was just getting relaxed and kind of getting comfortable, uh, I heard something outside the house. I heard what it was just after the 4th of July. And I, I said, I hope what I just heard was firecrackers, but I knew in my heart it really wasn't. It was bang, 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 one after another. It was the loudest bangs I'd ever heard. They must have had the biggest gun in the world. And immediately after that, I heard screams. I heard screams behind those shots, and I heard a mother crying. She said, my baby, my baby, my baby. She's just going to, if you have never heard a mother crying for her son who's just been shot down laying on the sidewalk, then you really don't know pain. So I had a chance to experience that, and I heard the fire engines go, the police cars coming, so I peeked out my door, and I said, I don't want to see anymore. I just went home, and for three days, I didn't sleep. And I said, why does this happen in my community? What's going on? Why does this continue to happen? And I started to think about the cars that I see coming through the community, stopping at the corner, bringing that kind of commerce into my community. And so, and I realized it wasn't only people from our community feeding into this. Some folks from outside had good jobs in making things happen. So I decided to dedicate a poem to them. I call it Down Low Habits. You're making $60,000. You're doing very well. Everybody in your office says how good you smell. You wear Italian-made shoes with your Versace bag. And you keep the people laughing. You ain't never been a drag. You go cruising down the highway in your big Mercedes Benz. Things are going so well, you can't even count your friends. But it was bound to happen to you sooner or later, because now your spirits are running low, and you've got to find your savior. It's not God you seek. It's not of church we speak. You're sneaking off to the ghetto, finding homie in the street with your down low habits. We just ain't going to have it. 
You've been tripping a long time. You barely can't control it. Keep it on the down low. Ain't nobody supposed to know it. Wearing long sleeve shirts because you can't afford to show it. Always wearing dark glasses. People think you're so cool. You can't afford to take them off because then they'll know you're a fool with your down low habits. We just ain't going to have it. We got some programs in the jails trying to get some brothers free. And there's a brother sitting in there with a PhD. You ask me what's wrong with that and why am I so angry? You say that all I got to do is just let the brother be? Well, it's easy for you to say with your head in the sand, always working on your game to get closer to the man. You see, that brother sacrificed and all his people were proud. He spent years of hard work just to stand out in the crowd. With all his efforts and achievements, you know he worked damn hard, but now he's wasting his life walking around the prison yard because of his down low habits. He can't afford to have it. Now you just picked up your trash and got high on the spot, and it comes out on the speaker, a young brother's been shot. They say it went down on the corner of the ghetto in the hood, but you don't give a damn because now you're feeling so good, you got your spirits back on high, no worries, no troubles. Then it comes back on the speaker that the homicide was double because of your down low habits. Our children can't afford to have it. By the time you get home to tuck your good babies in, there's babies laying dead in the streets where you just been because of your down low habits. Our communities can't afford to have it. We got neighbors telling neighbors this ain't how it's supposed to be, but we're really under attack by the bourgeoisie. Listen, if you think it's so important to do the ghetto some good, why don't you stop and buy that crap in your own damn neighborhood with your down low habits? We just not gonna have it. You ain't cool, you ain't down, you ain't nothing but trash. You're making all that good money and then killing babies with your cash. I don't know if the cops will leave the, leave the dealers where they are, but you come back to my hood, you're going back without your car, with your down low habits. We just ain't going to have it. So the next time you want to brag about all your ethnic pride, why don't you stop and try to figure out how you laid your conscience to the side with your down low habits. We just ain't going to have it. Thank you. Thank you. I was uh, talking to, had the opportunity to talk to some young people just before I came over here. We talked about the fact that one of the issues, the great issues in our community is that for whatever reason and of all the reasons there are, it doesn't matter, but we don't have the respect for ourselves as we used to. We don't have the respect for one another as we used to. And the reality is that in a meaningful sense, nobody really wants to talk about the love that we no longer have. I call this piece, uh, Love a Brother Back. I'm not hating on you. I'm just trying to love a brother true. I just want to know, can you love a brother back? Watch my back. Share with me the things we all seem to lack. Don't hate me when I'm doing good and don't kick me while we're down. I want to know, can you love a brother back? I don't care what they're rapping about. I just want to know whether we can share each other's clout. I can't be up as long as you're down and I cannot stand by while they keep you on the ground. All right, may, maybe I am the square, but that doesn't matter. We still have to treat each other fair. Okay, what if you are the one that's cool? That doesn't mean that we can't still live by a golden rule. Treat me the way you want me to treat you. I need to know will you love a brother back. You call me your nigger, and I say that you're my brother black. If you think it's right to put our people down, I got to tell you, I just don't have that knack. Not for drugs or for money or for anybody else's rules. Nothing but love in my heart for my brothers will ever be found. But I just got to know that you can love a brother back. Can you treat the precious women in our world with real respect when somebody wants to step up in your presence and show them disrespect? Can you be the hero, stand up for her, be down with her, and tell the coward that he's about to feel the power of your personal reject? You got to know that's part of loving a brother back. What about your family? What about the children that you never get to see? Can you help me make their world the best it's supposed to be? What about when you see me walk up to you on, on the street? Can you treat me like a brother that you're really glad to meet? Can you shake my hand with a smile on your face? Can you trust me just for one minute, my brother, to be in your space? Can you understand that you and me are in the same contest in somebody else's race? Come on, black man, tell me, can you love a brother back? With all the troubles and opportunities that us brothers got in common, unity and respect between black folks should not ever be a problem. Just forget about all that crap that keeps us dying in somebody else's trap. I just want to know why don't you love a brother back? We can't love ourselves or our people while we sit up in jail. With all the games they've been playing, it's not enough to just
just make bail. The work out here is dangerous, and it is hard, as you can see. And when we look around for somebody to help us do it, ain't nobody here but you and me. So I need to know, can you love a brother back? When the world outside is trying hard to take our people out, will you stand there and pretend that you don't know what it's all about? When everything they do is meant between me and you to create strife, can you stand and let them know that you will never, ever take another brother's life? I want to know, can you love a brother back? Can you love a brother back? Can you love a brother back? Understand that because a brother loves a brother, it doesn't mean that a brother is gay. It simply means that in the course of life, you found some sense along the way and some love for your people that will make you stronger day by day. Maybe they'll say it ain't cool, but don't listen to them. Don't be a fool. Don't take a brother's life. Don't use a gun or a knife. And don't do the evil work that others are waiting for us to do. And don't be ashamed to love me, my brothers. The same as I love you, our people need to know, are you willing to love a brother back? Love a brother back. Love a brother back. Are you willing to love a brother back? I love you, my brothers. Love me back. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. If you don't mind, I will do one more. I thank you for that. And uh, this is, I'll just kind of lighten it up just a little bit if, if you don't mind. Uh, this is a piece I call The Parade. And it's uh, got a little something that goes with it here. If I can get my technology right. Early one Wednesday morning, about 9 a.m., I went downtown just to sit in the square and look around. I was getting my life and my mind ready to, to pound the street and look for a job. My pockets and my life were so low, I sat there feeling like I had just been robbed. I watched the working people come and go. I sat there as the morning started to come to life, watching people in business dress moving to and fro. The square started to jump with activity all kinds of people passing right in front of me. There was so much going on that I could even smell it in the air. And all the while I was feeling invisible. Nobody on that busy street even seemed to know I was there. Just then, I noticed a commotion to my left down the street. I even thought I was beginning to feel some heat. If you can imagine it, there was this strut that was really creating a part in the crowd. Moving at a steady cadence, each stand, stride was grand and proud. I stepped up on the bench where I sat because I really wanted to see, and in just a few seconds, that elegant, confident strut was passing right in front of me. And all I could say was, oh, baby, walk that walk. There I was standing on my seat watching a one-woman parade marching down the street. I caught myself bouncing to the rhythm of her feet. She was the most elegant woman I had ever seen in all of my life. She made me forget about my problems, and at that moment, I was no longer thinking about my plight. Now, you may not believe this, but it wasn't even about a sexual thing, but just watching that woman strut with her head held high was making me feel like from that bench, I could almost reach out and touch the sky. I watched her proud strut as she walked away. She made me feel like this was going to be my brand new day. Just watching her strut was making me feel confident and proud. I was beginning to feel like even I could stand out in the crowd. I watched at a distance as she began to fade. All I could think of was, oh my dear, how much I do love a parade. My mind started shedding off all of its resistance to the task ahead of me. I wanted to pull myself together and stand up with some dignity. So now feeling much more confident, I stood down from that bench, telling myself how much I really had to offer. And right about then, I felt her presence like chill bumps under my skin. Like my aunt, like magic, my eyes were drawn to the right. And there it was again in full sight. The parade had finished its business down at the other end, had turned it around, and was coming back my way again. 
Then I heard my own mouth say out loud, be still my heart, as the street crowd began again to part. And since in my own intuition, I knew it was time once more to assume my former position. So I stepped back up on my reviewing stand. This parade was making me feel glad to be a man. I began to gloat as I watched her float, and I heard her marching band all around, and I saw the flower petals as they covered the ground along her path. I watched as this extraordinary parade of inspiration held my total concentration as her perfect strides urged me to turn the negative tides. I felt the spin of a powerfully positive new world under my skin. New world unfurled, my head began to whirl. I was caught up in a swirl. I jumped off that bench and as my feet hit the ground from the depths of my lungs, I let out a sound that must have been heard for miles around. With my mouth open wide, I howled out with pride. You go, girl! <laughs> this time I was not going to let her out of my sights. I was not about to let her fade. So I stepped out, I straightened out my tie and stood up straight and proud. Then with a stride of my own, I stepped into the part in that crowd. I fell right in step with the pulse of her band that played, and the next thing I knew I had joined that parade. So, my brothers and my sisters, if you ever see that strut coming your way, get ready, get set. It's about to be your brand new day. Lord, how I love a parade. Mm. Thank you. It's time to break off into some Les McCann and Eddie Harris trying to make it real compared to what? <laughs> uh, Deanna is going to be our next poet. Uh, so let's give Deanna a great round of applause. And then we're going to be next. Nice. You may write me down in history with your bitter and twisted lies. You may try me with, in the very dirt, but still, like dust I rise. Does my sassiness accept you? Accept you? Why are you beneath the gloom? Because I walk like I got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you, did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders filling with Oh, shirt is feeling down like teardrops, weakening by my soul's hopeful cries. Does my happiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Because I laugh like I got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air I rise. Does my sexiness accept you? Does it come to a surprise? I dance like I got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of my history and shame, I rise. Up from the past that's rooted pain, and I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping in white, welling and swelling. I bear in tide, the tide, leaving behind nights of terror and fear. I rise into daybreak with that's wondrously clear. I rise, bringing the gifts and the ancestors my ancestors gave. I am a dream, and I hope, and the hope of a slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. All right, yeah. uh, <clears throat> Once again, this is a very special time. I'm on. Uh, Mama gonna come up and do some poetry. So uh, I tell you, uh, Mama's an extraordinary and very wonderful lady, and it's, uh, the Lord blessed us to have a wonderful mother. And. Uh, Let's uh, give mom a great round of applause.
Yeah, mama gonna. Anyway, I'm gonna. You see where I have to talk. Anyway, I'm gonna try to do this for you. I don't Take know if I'm making stop, but I'm gonna try. You're special to us. Those who always do their best <laughs> to brighten up the days. Who shows concern and interest with their thoughtfulness and caring ways. Who give their best and add a touch of fun to everything. Are those who most deserve to have the best that life can bring. If anyone deserves a day that brings an enjoy, good enjoyment and makes a happy heart, we know that one someone is you. You are a real blessing in our lives. You're constantly thinking of others and putting their needs before your own. You live a life of faith, and your beautiful spirit shines. Though in all you do, that way it's such a joy and privilege to wish you and express your gratitude, appreciation, and love that is always in our heart for you. This is my grandbaby here. Right. I have three generations of it. I am a children, I am a grandchildren, and I have 11 great grandchildren. Thank you, Mama, and uh, I love you. Yeah, wasn't that beautiful? Let's give Mama yeah, another great yeah. round of applause. Yeah, she wanted to come here for this program. Yeah, I got it there. There you go. You know, that's, uh, tonight so far we see what this is all about, our people, just people treating each other, not sometime, most of the time, but all the time with courtesy, dignity, and respect. See how a bunch of us could get together and have a real good time, good down-home people, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, that's right. Just people treat each other like human beings. It don't cost a cent. It don't cost a cent. So uh, I'm gonna, um, our next uh, poet is uh, gonna be, um, uh, this, uh, let's see. Uh, brother Evan Ryan, uh, this, this brother's participated several times, so let's give uh, Brother Evan Ryan a round of applause, and then uh, next up is gonna be uh, Beverly Al Kareem, and then, um, Brother um, Randell Napaton, okay, in that, in that order, and then we'll follow with the next three. Okay, so let's give Brother uh, Ryan a round of applause. All right, uh, I'm gonna 
thank Larry for having me here, and I'm going to thank you guys for being here and giving such a wonderful show. Appreciate it. Everybody's poetry is, uh, sounds real good in here, and I hope everybody keep writing and keep expressing. All right. And, uh, you know, we as a community have been going through a lot of hardships uh, relationship-wise, along with just uh, family-wise, uh, depression-wise, and all the things that we learned over the past years that we all been new that, let's say, can train to open the eyes to. Uh, write about things like uh, poorness in black people in America, where the situation hasn't been straightened out, but there has been a struggle, a struggle <clears throat> that has been set and a foundation that has been laid that uh, seem to be getting laid down on in some respects of some of our respects to one another as a people. And um, we have a uh, high crime. I have a brother in the hospital right now who was shot with a assault rifle, you know, in the community recently, you know, lucky to be alive. Um, uh, I have sickness that has hit my family that took members. I've had the drug abuse that done took members of my family along with uh, they're still raping my, raping my family. In a sense, uh, there's been some things that you could be grateful for, like a good job or to keep yourself just sane and right and safe, you know, thanking God for every day. And, uh, but we still have these, these things. You know, I've, I've written all kind of poetry. We, uh, me and um, Brother Patrick here was in a, a drum group together and we sang a song called Why We Gotta Be Poor in America. And I read a lot of poetry, you know, just off of that and uh, it's a song and stuff, but uh, we have some things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with uh, one that's called uh, Thank you for the love. It goes. Your beautiful personality is aura, even when it's altered. My conversations with you are most meaningful, although sometimes they hurt me. With smells of fresh fragrance, well-dressed well angel angelic lights. There were looks of disappointments as I stood next to your life. That smile has delighted my heart in the joy that I'm the one who bought it. Turn envy, gregariousness, if someone else will cause them. Not an obsession, because I'm always thinking of you while I sit all along in the company of other people. When you reached out your hand, there was no tick before it was taken. Well, if we never see one another again, my heart is left here saying, I love you, and I'll love you forever. Thank you for the love. All right, now I'm going to touch on a few of these uh, heartbreaking lives that we're living with just uh, news. I'm a uh, I'm going to say about something today, and I'm going to speak about the executions that's happening today and, and the, ex the last execution, and uh, I wrote something about the last execution that they had in California here. All right, uh, first one I did the last time I was here, I'd like to do that again because uh, it seems like uh, nothing's uh, changing too much, but you can see that it is a change because People are getting tired of it, and, and uh, people are starting to stand up, and we're living in a world of terrorism when we're being terrorized by ourselves, and, our, and, and it's, 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 it's coming to a head, and that's what's happening. All right, so this one's called Faultless Crime. Faultless Crime, driving into town on a clear seeing evening stopped at a corner store where people were lingering. Crime has gotten out the wheels, conversations ruling sound. When the roar of death 
claimed a horrific, horrifying crime. Someone was falling as we all jumped down while two in the car left face from around. Someone was more than injured in a family slaughter. Someone's handed the news and final expenses looms cost them. No one's caught and helps without with this faultless crime running about. Looking for a person that can't be found. AP being searched, days have passed now. The whole nation's worried and fate is now faced. It's faultless crimes, missing persons case. In attendance at an event, smiles were plenty and entertainment was gifted, mingling with people from all around. When someone found anger and another one smiled, the stab was low, put the smile on the floor. Mixed in the crowd hid the cold. In a tragic afflict of a perfect event, a smile couldn't prevent being turned to torment, falling victim to faultless crime. Innocent bystanders slain, didn't know nothing. Now all's covered up with reason screaming, saying nothing. Another love cost happening, faultless crime visits the family. Not to mention the people who go out to do something about it, taking the cause into their own hands, add more fuel to the fire. Before they discover what they have did, they've already added to faultless crimes list. Living in an area that don't talk the law, death toll astonishing, bleeding heart, secrets haunt. Blaming authorities that no one's held to account for this faultless crime we can't do nothing about. If one knows anything about foul play and don't say, that's the reason for Faultless Crimes Day. Because faultless crime has touched many, causing hurt and pain and lives of misery. The loss, the cost, overwhelmed in thoughts. What was the faultless crime all about? Anger's roaming and life is mad with, but horrific appeals on her with faultless crime. I'd like to touch on one more, and this is about, uh, I wrote this tonight, they killed uh, brother Tukey Williams, Stanley Tukey Williamson is up in San Quentin, and uh, no matter what nobody done, um, even um, with this last one on hold, I'm glad it's on hold, they need to keep them all on hold, they need Roseburg back to cut it out, you know, make everybody stop again, you know, uh, it's bad enough, you know. It's like no cakewalk if you are in prison. So this one's called The Executions of Life, The World's Epitome. A starved being, never given anything. Now life is called the bones, called struggling. Flies a land from death, by death, to beget the ones whose hearts are unsympathetic. And a cause of life, where dysfunction and ignorance was leading to be the leader that's being led astray about what others did to represent what's meant in this execution's date. Now, a long time it has been spent in solitary where that good person was found to be in itself, where his decision had already been found to find. It's too late to be good in the executions of life. There are many of us who makes the big mistake, deemed as good and get along in a world of civil liberties, and ends up in the judicial system, a lost soul judged in fate. The mistake, too late to be good in the state correctional facilities. Still called death row even after being redeemed, like names in the past, good as noble for a peace prize of clemency. Hardened hearts and hurt a blind mercy in future's humanity. Kill them, we killed them, now who are we to be? Weapons of mass destruction, in the name of honor, defend the country. You kill, we kill, until the world could see. It's too late to be good, our good will not be seen. Even as a jury who voted for death, just as the courts and governors won't grant a stay of clemency, now the whole state's hands are dirty in the date that has been set. And when the moment has happened, we're all one in neglect. Our country has gave to illness as the ones we put to death. Until we stop world killing, forgive and remove this bad element of unnatural death and execute lives of prosperous work and especially full of happiness, it's too late to be good. 
Our good will not be seen in the executions of life, the world's epitome. Yeah, let's give Brother Everett another great round of applause. Yeah. Okay, our next poet is going to be uh, Brother uh, Randell Napperton. Let's give him a great round of applause. This is his first time. All right, there, brother. Okay, all right, there, brother. Yeah. Uh, I just really want to say again, thank you. Uh, one man's dream is uh, another man's escape. You know, to keep him from the streets and everything. Uh, I'm going to read a poem, uh, Me Versus My Faith, and uh, it's, it's, it, it tells a lot about my story of coming to Christ and everything. Um, uh, I feel my writing is uh, very selfish, and uh, until I shared it with a couple of people, they said it's enlightening. So again, this is my first time, so. You know. I don't do too good on spotlight. <laughs> okay, me versus my faith. In a dog-eat-dog -dog world, we race to knock the next one down. In pain of a hot, steady pour, our slander is beyond sound. But faith is to believe a different prize through unmistaken grace, deceived by fate in various style in sight of the same place. To trust in God's word that life can be forever, yet, su yet supernatural thoughts seem, absur seem absurd at times of stormy weather. So I believed in me putting my faith in my fate, only letting myself down upon conquering this place. Gathering new souls in need to gather myself as my life is told and seen as an example, a sample of simplicity in contrast to a complex prude, as, so, as common as a soft answer from one who's used to being rude. But as often as righteousness doesn't really go on, is as often as we need to see how we're never really wrong. Because a mistake in the mind is a heart that made a mess as I'm seeing in your heart is your mind failing test. So as the bar is reset to greater and higher planes, it is still your flesh that is greeted by your Christian friends. <clears throat> Again, I speak to my flesh to question my faith that I be not deceived by my family's face because their smile tells me to keep on going in whom I've done much for, yet for the kingdom, nothing. So greatness, so does greatness lie within all that I show as my holiness tends to creep slowly out the window? Now my, days are filled with, now my days are filled with looking back to grab on to what was once my best, searching for new days of positive hope, because the ways of my fate question if I can really cope. Now that's just me leaning on myself, trying to learn dignity in, in accepting his help, or to humble myself before my pride and still thank God for giving me this life. So trust and believe I still pray for forgiveness, because I never asked for my mind to be such a mess. Thank you. I got uh, two more, and this one's fairly short, but uh, again, it just, it, it speaks about my experiences and stuff uh, coming up. This is love paused in me. Love paused in me. Before my adolescence, it was at moments of imagination, in perspective of life's appeal, when morals seemed unreal, love paused in me. With the conviction of curiosity, no, conviction of curiosity pleased my immorality, yet a pain of sensitivity and a lust for creativity, love paused in me. So alone I wandered, wandered quietly wanting to be heard by a love I couldn't be, but was obvious to me, love paused in me. Manipulating what was fervent when I was discontent with, while struggling with patience to finally love again, love paused. Please, bless pray. Please press play. Excuse me. That was it. So this one here, the, the last one is, uh, again, it's a, just a selfish piece to just kind of, again, you know, your, your dream to have this place is, is, is a fulfillment to me for being able to share here. It's very th therapeutic for me to share, uh, going through recovery and so forth. So. Uh, this one is called Try Him. For years I've been chasing things I can see, 
simply contradicting what I actually believe. I was in a world of contemplating fantasies, denying my potential and all possibilities. I hid myself from ever being successful, simply afraid of doing things I was able to do. I could only understand the things that I controlled, constantly neglecting what I was being told. So how could I imagine these Christians were right, praising faith in things far out of sight? To me, it was like walking straight backwards, closing my eyes that I could see the real world. Now they told me to surrender control that I may gain peace, and in that joy, he will make me feel free. As his word said, the goals, those are the goals of my faith, the revealing of Christ through me in every way. So of course, it didn't take, of course it takes time to get out of worldly expectations, and by his greatness, I have overcome some limitations. And through Christ, I have been made more than a conqueror as he was in Hebrews, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So as it is written, the great I am is and always will be, lover of his people, provider of family. So I put my trust in him, for he said he would never leave. Thus I will be content with God, for he will never forsake me. All right, there, brother, that was wonderful. Let's give our brother a wonderful round. Let's give him a big round of applause there. All right. Uh, we're going to have a, a two more poets, and then I'm going to finish up with a finale, and then we're going to have uh, refreshments there. And uh, our next poet is going to be um, uh, Ray Raquel Smith, uh, B.R.A. Papit. Better known as Papillon. Let's give her a great round of applause, and then we're going to follow that with our sister, uh, Beverly L. Kareem. And then I'll uh, finish out the program. Thank you. Welcome, uh, thank sister. You. All right. So good to be here. All right. All right. Yeah. I want to, yeah. You know, support is everything. And I just want to give honor to you, Mama. Can I call you Mama? I just give honor to you because it's because of people like you that all of this is. This stays strong, this stays believing and always has open arms for those that they love. It's important to know that we are loved. I just want to start off to warm up a little bit. I'm going to sing y'all a little something. Unity. change unity you and me we can make a change as long as you believe This is uh, my first piece called, When Will My Day Come? When will my day come, kingdom come? Who will be my king to crown me their queen? Take away these mean lines round my forehead. Who will head my pain? Take away torture's remains. Who will lay down with me in my ugly days? Who will stay by my side, not pride? Who will show me I have no need to hide? Who will chide me with tender kindness, be mindless but heartfelt? Who will belt my misery and treasure me, will you? Will you take the time needed to stand with me? Needing me, will you? Will you fight for me, the one dying for the one who is crying? Will you hear me? Will you come by my way? Will you cradle the hurt till the hurt is gone? Are you the one? Are you? Are you the one who will hum a song with me together? Can we feather a bed for all of us to rest? Are you the one? Who will show me what's best? 
Will you confess the wrongs that you know so that we can all better get along? Are you the one who will lead us to become one? Are you the one? Does your mind say yes? Less be I, more be we. When will our day come? Kingdom come, kingdom come. This was the first poem that I wrote. It's real short, like one line probably if I wrote it. And I just want to just say a little about inspiration. See, a lot of times you have to introduce a person to what their gift is because they don't see they self. And there was this one t teacher who was inspired by her spirit, and this is how she got down. Before class started, you had to write in your journal, and she would read what you wrote. And this was the first time pen went to paper for me. I see only what's there to see. I know only what's told to me. I love only that I can be away from this world's misery. That's okay. Thank you. Um, you want me to do with that show? You want me to come back and do another? Uh, yes. And then we'll start? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next poem is, poet is going to be uh, Sister Beverly Al Karim. Uh, thank you for being patient. And, you know, the, the beauty of this thing is I just want to let you know it's just a blessing that we're able to do this here and been doing this for 29 years. And guess what? Next year it's going to be 30. And after that, it's going to be 31, then 32, and ba past Baskin Robbins. <laughs> so let's give this sister a great round of applause here, Al Karim. Thank you. <laughs> Let's get a sister a great round of applause. We go way back. Thank you so much, and it is a pleasure. My name is Beverly Al Karim. I'm a poet. I read around in the city, and I'm going to get started right away. So my first piece is a very popular piece that I read around in the city of San Francisco and the East Bay. And it's called, Have You Ever Walked Down Golden Gate Avenue? You start to walk and notice the lines, people sitting on the side, dark faces of crime, singing a sad song that keep them bound, walking around with several frowns. Walking down the streets of Golden Gate is an illusion of time. Wondering what's on these people's mind. And then you started to notice the homeless, the prostitutes, the pimps, and the hustlers too. And I say to you, have you ever walked down Golden Gate Avenue? You notice several others asking for change to buy them something to eat, someone with a kneeler in their arm or feet, a glass pipe in their mouth that's destroying them as they fight to stay alive to get the next high. And then you walk down to Leavenworth, passing, lurking, and hide, hoping to make it to the other side trying not to show the sadness that's prevailed on your face when you know that God can give these people grace. Disappointment, rejection, and resentment has captured this poor lost souls. A maze of confusion and corruption creeping all around this little part of town. Someone's mother, father, even a child that has fallen into a world of crime, trying to escape a world of misery, dishonest, and forbidden zone that wants to sing a better song. Have you ever walked down Golden Gate Avenue? Finally, you get to the end, and you see the beautiful theater that's ahead, and the people that's trying to see a good play, to be entertained, 
and motivated to escape the drama in a world of dismay. And then I go afar, standing on the Golden Gate Bridge, feeling the fog as it creeps in, watching the images as they appear in a melancholy form, only to forget that horrid song, to know that today I walk down Golden Gate in a courageous way. Thank you. This piece that I, I wrote was from um, um, a theater in Las Vegas. I worked in a theater there for a few years. Had the opportunity to work with some very good people. And it's called, And So It Was. We walked by each other when our eyes met. His smile appeared like a telescope out of nowhere. We said hello as our hearts jumped up and down with joy, singing and praising as we acknowledged each other, realizing that it was time to come forward. As we chat, we agreed that we should meet a date to see, and so it was. We danced, sang, and romanced. Then he tried to control when he reached this level of love that satisfied his soul. Suddenly, out of nowhere, it came rising in the early morning like an overdose of madness, trying to destroy my joy. And then I said, recognize. I'm a lady with my own style, covered in the blood of Jesus, soaked in the power of love, overjoyed with admiration, blessed with the gem of wisdom. So why do I need to acknowledge a mad amount of disappointment, superficial love, misleading and negative words, a death of destruction and aggressiveness that tried to cripple my spirit as I refused to let go? My assurance came from my Savior when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Follow me, and I will always make things right. And now the love that I embrace has floated to another dimension of my faith. And so it was. I'm going to do one poem, and this uh, poem is um, uh, I wrote a while back, uh, and that's, this is the way I really feel about life, you know, and family. Uh, this poem is entitled, uh, uh, Love is Life. Love is life, and life is so very, very nice. When the atmosphere is pleasant and thoughts are peaceful, Life for living is like a warm and beautiful feeling, touching me, touching you. As I look into the beautiful horizons, I see children playing, warm and safe under the loving eyes of the friendly skies, vivacious, energetic, and so full of life, and love is life. As the wonderfulness of the day settles in, a lovely lady place a warm and sweet kiss on my lips. My heart has been touched and blessed. This beautiful feeling created by me and you was made to be shared. Always remember the beautiful days of summer. Love is what we make it, and may it always be something beautiful dear near our hearts. Love is me touching you. Love is you touching me. Love is being in touch with each other's feelings. Love is giving, sharing, and caring. Love makes two hearts sing in harmony. Love makes wedding bells ring. Love brings rain to the flowers and trees and helps them grow beautiful and tall. Love is you and me and a family together, living for the love this beautiful life has given us. And one more, and then uh, Sister um, uh, Papiana is going to close out. Um, uh, this, uh, uh, um, uh, with everything going on in the world, like I, I uh, war and things and war out here in the streets, uh, I like to dedicate this to uh, those who are not, uh, it's customary that we do this every year. Um, those that are not here to celebrate this moment with us, there's uh, a lot of people who have uh, passed this past year. So I'd like to uh, dedicate this to all of them. Um, 
and our good friend, Mr. Jimmy Lester, a, a wonderful gentleman and at one time the number two rated middleweight in the world, and our good buddy, uh, Mr. Henry Clark. Uh, this poem is entitled, uh, Somewhere Someone Has Said and Done Something Beautiful. Out of the midnight blue, as a gentle breeze tames the turbulent winds and the pouring rain, then as the rainy clouds parted, the sunshine smiled upon all of the people of the world. Then the eyes of the sky opened and gave us a beautiful day in the sun. People opened their eyes with a profound respect for life. People opened their hearts and gave love that filled other people's hearts with appreciation for life. People opened their minds, the reservoirs of wisdom, and poured golden knowledge into the mainstreams of society. As hearts of love and rhythm with life get ready to set sail, from which the ships of friendship will sail, carrying a cargo of love, trust, unity, brotherhood, friendship, and understanding. The raging seas have mellowed down from the love-touched waves. Tranquility and sweet serenity is the music we hear. Somewhere, someone has said and done something beautiful. I've touched upon every shore as my desire to rise to the golden heights. Inspiration elevated my heart, and I soared above every mountain. I spoke of unity for all mankind, and the skies were peacefully filled. In fire, in rain, in darkness, in times of storm, in times of uncertainty, I know that there will be sunshine because somewhere someone has said and done something beautiful. And tonight, you have all said and done something beautiful with your poetry. And uh, God bless you all. And Sister uh, uh, Papillon, she's going to come up and finish up the program. So let's give her a great round of applause. you guys a question. Are we cursed or are we blessed? blessed. We are blessed. blessed. Now listen. This is called Cursed Me a Blessing. She cursed me so bad, felt like welts to the back of my bones. She cursed me a blessing. She cursed me so bad, the tears stinging down my face hurt so bad, I hid in shame. She cursed me a blessing. Now listen. She cursed me so bad, I began to curse myself. She cursed me a blessing. I got so good at cursing myself till the day came, I realized I could bless every curse she gave me. She cursed me a blessing. The day came, I realized I could bless every curse I gave myself. She cursed me a blessing. Then I blessed her. No more cursing from her. No more putting out what she never should have gave. No more misbehaving. No more caving in to that. You see, she cursed me a blessing. Now you hear what I'm saying? She cursed me a blessing. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Thank you. Once again, I would like to uh, thank you all very much. Uh, once again, this is a uh, Another positive example of what a beautiful thing we can do when we come together. And I personally, from my heart, would like to thank you all uh, for attending this uh, event this night. And um, it, it, it has truly been a blessing. Like, uh, I'll tell you, it hit me right there in the heart, like to see Mama and uh, a little princess there. I know where Big Spike at. He's uh, out somewhere around right? <laughs> But uh, good to see uh, Brother Reggie, Brother Ryan, uh, Brother Neil, uh, Sister Smith, uh, Brother Patrick. Uh, all, all, uh, uh, let's give another great round of applause for Brother Brian and, and Mr. Pam for coming over here from the East Bay, the East Bay Connection. And let's give Brother uh, Diallo the wonderful artwork 
is from a brother here, right here in the community, Brother Diallo. And uh, also, we have another brilliant artist here. Brother Everett Ryan is another brilliant artist. See, we got world class right here in the neighborhood. See, that's a blessing. See? OK, once again, let's give uh, our cameraman, Mr. Dave Swabby, a great round of applause for his wonderful work here. Thank you, Dave. We, we love you. We appreciate everything you do. And let's give uh, Linda Brooks Burton, our branch manager and staff, a great round of applause. Uh, yeah, come on up, Linda. Yeah. Linda, we, we greatly appreciate everything you do Thank every you. year. You, you help us make this a wonderful Thank program. You. And, and while, while I have the mic, though, I, I would like to make a little announcement. Oh, okay. uh, there's another program that the, the Public Library is putting on. It's called the Unsung Heroes Program. We've been doing it for 18 years. And what this is is we like to seek out and recognize those in the community who go above and beyond the call of duty in what they do to serve their community. And we actually have a winner from last year, Reginald Stevenson, right Let's here. Who got an award for um, his community work, uh, doing his vigils out on Third Street, where there is still a lot of devastation. Even today, we've had some, um, you know, terrible news out there. So um, keep up the good work, Brother Reginald. And if you have anybody, I know everybody can think of someone that they could nominate. This is a great way to have them recognized, you know, because a lot of people go and do work and they never get money or any recognition. Not that they want it, but this is a, a good way to surprise somebody in your. Uh, you know, in your circle. So I have these applications. They'll be out there with the food. Please pick up one and think about somebody. And thank you. And thank you, Larry Ware, for 29 wonderful years. I haven't been here all those times. <laughs> That's him. All right, thank you. And you want to say something, Precious? Yeah, Precious, please. Yeah, you say something, uh, little Princess Precious. Yeah, say something, baby. Yeah, my baby. Who loves you, baby? You. Huh? I can't hear you. You. Oh, I can't hear you. 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 Me, you. Baby? Yes. Yeah, you, my little princess. God bless you. You want to say something, baby? <laughs> okay, once again, we're going to uh, have refreshments right now. And again, thank you very much. Uh, and next year, number 30. All right, thank you. All right. Okay. Yay! I'm a princess. <laughs>